Um, hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be looking at and reflecting on some of the Psalms from the Bible, which were written as songs and can still be sung, but can also still be used as prayers. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the Psalm has in the Dewey Rames Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list Psalm numbers as they're given in the Dewey Rames Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 11 in the Dewey Rames Bible, but Psalm 12 in the RSV. Unto the end, for the octave. A psalm for David. Description of the psalm. Save me, O Lord, for there is now no saint. Truths are decayed from among the children of men. The state of affairs being described here is actually a pretty common one, a time when people are hung up on their biases or false traditions or even predictions of what the Bible calls false prophets, people who try to convince them that rejecting the truths of God is fine and won't hurt in the long run, a few of these times are even mentioned in the Bible, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, the people at the time of Noah, the Canaanites before the time of Joshua, the Israelites who turned away from God to worship idols, and so on. However, what's even more common than these times is situations in which a single person isn't alone in the world, but feel like they are because so many people quarrel with them when they try to speak the truth. These words are a timeless expression of what it's like to be a lover of truth living on planet Earth. They have spoken vain things, every one to his neighbor. With deceitful lips and with a double heart have they spoken. Vain things means fruitless or useless things, things that offer no real benefit. Everything that leads people away from holiness is therefore a vain thing, and so, so much of the chatter that people engage in is exactly this kind of purposeless noise. May the Lord destroy all deceitful lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Not that lips or tongues in particular are responsible or should be punished, but the people who lie and speak arrogantly should be dealt with by God because they only obstruct the truths of God from being heard, in the case of liars, or accepted in the case of the proud. Who have said, We will magnify our tongue, our lips are our own, who is Lord over us. This portion of the psalm criticizes people for believing that they don't need to watch what they say or try to serve God with their words. A lot of the time, those very people who have the loudest voices are the same people who have the least valuable things to say. As an aside, the reference to magnifying the tongue may refer to a method of speaking used by public figures before the invention of the microphone, in which the voice rose and fell in such a way as to get the attention of people nearby a type of loud chant or singing method that allowed their voice to carry. Priests, kings, and governors used methods like these to make themselves heard sometimes in the ancient world, even before the first megaphones were used. However, too many of those public figures had their own messages that they wanted heard when the message of God would have benefited people more. By reason of the misery of the needy and the groans of the poor, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety. I will deal confidently in his regard. God promises to rescue the poor and the suffering, and save them boldly. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried by the fire, purged from the earth refined seven times. In metalworking, the refining process is used to remove impurities from metal. For example, it can be used to remove silicon from iron ore, producing a pure iron. It's not normal to refine something seven times. Clearly, the idea is that God's words are free from all impurities, so if people speak those pure words, they're still just as pure. However, the words of people are not nearly as pure, most often being applicable only to themselves and their own concerns, or even being openly deceptive. Thou, O Lord, wilt preserve us, and keep us from this generation forever. This generation refers to the large amount of wickedness and deception that was described earlier in the psalm, as well as perhaps the harm that those things cause to individual people. The wicked walk round about, according to thy highness, thou hast multiplied the children of men. Children of men refers to those who do evil, not that God intentionally increases evil, but that he sometimes allows evil to increase in order to show his own glory, as he did when he permitted Pharaoh to be hard-hearted. 
He had the chance to show the people of Israel how far he was willing to go for them with the plagues and the parting of the Red Sea, precisely because Pharaoh was absolutely incorrigible and refused to give up. This part of the psalm acknowledges that God sometimes allows these kinds of things to be set in motion, but describes the situation to God from the ground up in an imploring way. In short, this psalm is a description of someone in hard times, surrounded by closed ears and wickedness, who, nonetheless, doesn't doubt that God will save them and bring down consequences upon the evildoers. Uh, that's all for now, so keep asking questions and... Thanks for watching.